back to Hasbro's Hide. I mentioned at the end of our 12th video in the 6.5 rental, I was going to take a break from it for just a little bit. I'll get back to it soon enough, but try to decide if I continue on or uh, get a new barrel, which I believe is what that gun is going to need to shoot, like the ones you're going to see in this series. And so in this series, we're going to start with a uh, 5.56 series, and that's going to be with two different rifles. Now, these two different rifles uh, have taken a different approach to accuracy. Both required really good barrels. Both required really good triggers. And both have pretty decent scopes. Okay, and just like the 6.5 Grindel, they're going to be Vortex Strike Eagle um, 4 to 24 by 50 scopes. And so that part of it's the same. So we're going to have the same trigger, same scope, but we're going to have different upper and, and lowers on each rifle. And then we're going to have uh, different barrels and different muzzle brakes. And so with that, you would think you get a radically different shooting gun. And in fact, both barrels are different lengths. Uh, the Wilson Combat Barrel, as you'll see, is a 20-inch Super Sniper uh, rifled barrel. And it, it's really an exceptional piece of work, an exceptional quality from Wilson Combat. But the other gun has a um, White Oak Armament 18-inch SBR barrel. And again, excellent, excellent quality from White Oak Armament. And the results will show that as well. So uh, what we're going to do is you see this huge pile of bullets. We're going to start off with a benchmark because we're coming in well into the development of both of these guns. And I've already found several loads that shoot really, really well, and we'll share those in this series. But what we're going to do then is explain, explore those loads with other smaller combination changes. We don't have to do the huge range testing of powder. Typically, we won't anyway in this series because I've already done that in the past. And I want to share with you then uh, what we do when we have a good round and can we make it even better. So when I say a good round, what are we talking about? Well, the White Oak Armament, I've got to 0.4 MOA. And that's five shots fed from the magazine, 0.4 MOA. And so I think that's uh, really good. And can we get better? We're going to find out. The Wilson Combat is right there with it. I've got between 0.43 and had one slightly get out of there that could have been quite a bit lower, but 0.43. So the key thing about both of those numbers, the 0.4 from the White Oak Armament, the 0.3, is a lot of that is probably me. And I enjoy that part because I want to work on what I need to do to get me to be a better shooter and have the ammunition the best it can be and have their guns the best they can be as well. And so that's, that's what I like to do, and you're going to see some of that in this series. Now, I found several loads that shoot really, really well. Getting both of those guns to shoot 0.5 MOA, certainly below 0.75, is actually pretty easy. And it is, it's, so that should encourage you, if you have a gun that shoots more than that, to look into at least those two brands, because I've had just really good results with them. But then also I found a powder that is less expensive. Now, you'll see in this series we'll shoot 828 XBR, for instance. And uh, I, you know, I buy these in small quantities. I'm not one that's going to go out and buy eight pounds of powder all the time, especially for a 223. Um, for the type of shooting I do, it's just, you know, I've got Reloader 15 for my 308 that I bought 10 years ago, and you know, it's still good, but I'd rather keep smaller quantities, two or three pounds kind of thing. So that's. What I've done, the reason I say that is because then you're going to buy, uh, you know, pay a little bit more, but you can also buy them locally often. And so when you do 8208 XBR, at least in my area, it's about $34 a pound, not counting tax. Well, that's kind of steep. Well, I ordered some of this a while back, Shooter's World Precision. And I got this from Mid-South. And at the time I got it, it could be a little different, but it's just slightly below $20 a pound. And so I wanted to try it. It's supposed to be roughly equivalent to Varget, and we'll do some tests directly against that. But the key thing I want you to, to know about this powder is that is the powder that has gotten these results. So we have an inexpensive powder that's producing really good results and really decent standard deviations and extreme spreads and all the sort of statistics on velocity and things that you might want to know about. And we'll share those in the series as well. Now, of all these combinations you see, this is what we're going to play with. So the standard load uh, that I found that will shoot 
Now this is the amazing thing, okay? So I tried to work on this too. Once I got each gun accurate, then I tried to find a load that would shoot in each gun. So I don't have to have one set of loads for one gun, one set of loads for another. Could I get to an accurate load for both? And we're going to do that in this series as well. But one of those values that shows up in this will be 22.6 grains of precision rifle. And when we load that with this bullet, the Sierra uh, uh, 224, 77 grain hollow point bow tail with a cantaloupe. Um, this is the you know this is the 9377G. If you want to order these, you got to have that just right, or you won't get the of course right bullet. You'll get them without a cantaloupe. Um, when you shoot that bullet and that powder, CCI 41 primers, and this is Lake City 2018 brass. Um, I bought it all new, fire formed it. And used other bullets. We fire formed it, got it, uh, got it pretty good. And then, you know, of course, it's annealed, trimmed, and chamfered, you know, sized, etc. All the normal prep work that you would do. Um, and in, in fact, now I'm just annealing them every time through because the anneal EZ, which you can see the videos on the channel, is so easy to use. I can just stack them up and do 200 and nothing flat. So uh, Lake City, and we're going to use t in this series. We're going to we're going to load up again, and we're going to test it with this. This is the Lake City brass. Twice fired, annealed, uh, chamfer, debird, size, everything. So, but uh, we're going to do a little bit of twist to our standard load. So, 22.6 grains precision rifle is what we're going to do, and then we're going to uh, start off with our baseline load that we know shoots really well. And so we'll load up, I don't know, 10, 15 of those, and warm the gun up, and sort of things like that with that, and then confirm uh, everything is working as we ex expect. Well, uh, after that then, we're going to, today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at primers. Now, in the series, we're going to look at least at all of these bullets. Okay, so we have 69 grain tipped match kings. This has the polymer tip in it. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, we're going to try those. Um, I have some of the 77 grain tipped match kings too somewhere. We'll, we'll try, I didn't find them, but we'll find those, and we'll shoot those probably as well. But then we go all the way down to really light bolts. Now I've not shot in this these rifles, these 40 grains. So these 40 grain VMAX. And so that'll be a fun challenge. And we'll see how far we go, but um, we'll see what we do in that. And then we're going to, here's a, I guess I have two boxes of the same thing. So we can shoot them twice if you want. <laughs> and we'll do that. We'll check these out. Um, and then we have the 75 grain Amexes. Now, these are a really long bullet, and to seat them properly, uh, they're going to be so far down the case, we can't load them to magazine length. So these will be hand, one, hand fed one at a time, but just kind of a test. I really got them for a buddy's bolt gun and loaded him a few just as a test. But we're going to just, I thought it might just be fun to shoot these. Um, we're going to shoot the 55 grain then V Maxes as well. Now, these are flat base V Maxes, and so I expect some pretty good accuracy out of these, but they'll fall off at distance. Um, but anyway, we'll have some fun with that. Um, and then uh, we have the 75 grain boat tail hollow points from Hornady, and, and we'll shoot these as well. And then the, the one bullet I know that has shoot, shoots really well, in fact, I bought two more boxes of these, is the 73 grain ELD match. And so we'll develop some loads around that. I have some already that are that are decent on that um, as well. But for this video, again today, what we're going to do is we're going to take our standard load, and then what we're going to do is change primers. Okay, we know this load is really good with CCI 41s, and so we're going to shoot CCI 41s. But what about CCI just standard rifles, 400 primers? We're going to shoot. Now these are fairly high power loads. They're really classified as 5.56 loads, and so. Um, I've never had an issue with this. There are some that would say, oh, that could be a slam fire risk in a semi-automatic. Well, you take your own judgment on that. I've never had an issue and shot tens of, probably literally tens of thousands of rounds with these primers. But um, in an AR, I just don't think I see the risk in that. But you make your own call. Well, so that's CCI's. We're going to shoot the, the, you know, the 41 military primers, and then we're going to shoot the standard small rifle primers. We're going to do Remington, too. And so we have Remington small rifle primer, some six and a half. And so we're going to shoot those. That'll be another change. We'll see how we do against all three of these. And then we're going to try their bench rest uh, small rifle primers. That's what they call seven and a halves. And so we'll be able to compare these two, but also be able to compare back through all of these to our standard CCI 41 uh, primer load. 
Well, finally, then, I have uh, these as well. Now, I'm not trying yet, and we, we may. I have some other uh, Magnum small rifle primers that we could try. But let's we'll keep it simple. So right now, uh, relatively simple, right now we're going to shoot small rifle Federals, the standard small rifle. And then we have the, their small rifle match primers. And so uh, we should have a good variety here. We have a bench rest and a match variety. We'll try that. We have the 41s, which we know are good, and then we have two other, well, really three standard um, small rifle primers. So uh, we'll get to it. We'll get these loaded up. I'll show a little bit of the loading, but not too much. You guys probably have seen enough loading, but I'll show you just a little bit of that. And then we'll go hit the range, trying out today our standard load with all of these six different primers. All right, you can see now uh, the markings that I put on the cases to differentiate the different primers because we're going to have the same load through all these, the same case, uh, length, trim, chamfer, all that, kneeling. And then we're going to have uh, the same powder, same bullet, and same seating depth, etc. But we have different primers. And so this is the standard CCI 41. Now these will be blue marked and these will be black marked. Uh, then this is going to be the CCI 400s. This is then the... Um, Remington 6.5 standard rifle primer, Remington 7.5 bench rifle, bench rest uh, rifle primer, and then we have the Federal standard small rifle and the Federal match small rifle. So just by keeping these markings, we'll be able to keep things straight with all the primers um, when we go to the range. And you know, if you, in case you actually dump them, it happens, it happens, right? You can always just put them back in the box because it's going to be labeled and you'll know exactly then what you have and you don't have to worry about shooting the wrong loads. Um, so we're going to go ahead and load a few rounds in Shooter's World um, uh, Precision Rifle Powder. And we'll show just a little bit of that. And then we'll talk about the seating of the bullets. All right, we're loading our rounds now with the Shooter's World Precision Rifle Powder and 22.6 grain. So what we do is we hit 22.5 on the RCVS Charge Master Light. And then we trickle up very carefully. And so this one is already agreed. Now I'm using two scales. Um, to do this with, just sort of double check each electronic scales to avoid uh, significant drift and things. So uh, what we're using here is the Brifit scale, and there's again a video on scales, a couple videos on scales uh, in the um, playlist if you want to look for those. And then this is the um, Maxis Dante scale, and it's been pretty good too. I think it drifts maybe just a little bit more than you'll see the Brifit. It doesn't drift too often, but Nonetheless, you can see, and they're both really accurate, and they both, in this case, read to 0.02 grains. So um, the RCBS Charge Master does a really good job of weighing pretty accurately and hitting the numbers pretty well if you wait for it to beep, as mentioned. So it said 22.5, and this is 22.52, so uh, <laughs> close enough by the RCBS. So we're going to trickle up then to 22.6. All right, 22.6, and we'll see how the Maxis agrees. It seems to be a bit more sensitive to getting the charge directly in the center of the pan. That's saying 22.66, 64. So we'll double check our Brifit again. Well, our Brifit just went up. So let's re-zero it, and we'll double check. 22.60. We'll just do the same thing here just to make sure everything's good because we're just starting with these scales and they're probably still warming up. So, yeah, 22.6 there after I re teared it. So, that's good. Uh, we'll just continue to, to load these then. All the loads will have exactly the same charge again because we're only changing the primer. So, uh, I'll finish these up and then we'll seat the bullets. All right, seating our bullets now. And just checking uh, overall length, I've backed this uh, seating stem out a little bit. This is a Hornady die with their micrometer adjustments uh, adapter there on it, which does a pretty good job, does a nice job. And so um, we've seated these roughly to 2.250, just sort of checking how well they repeat. So there's 2.249. Check another one. Two point two four nine and 
2.25, 2.5. So that's about the range you're getting. 2.249 on the low, 2.25, 2.5. And that's, of course, uh, the bullets uh, changing uh, slightly. In that. We'll measure cartridge base to ogive, and uh, we'll, we'll just confirm exactly where they're seating. It's a more accurate way to do it. But overall length is good. We'll finish seating these, and then we'll see you at the range. Back in from the range, and you can see, as expected, the CCI 41s are probably the best overall as far as group size and et cetera. But the um, Remington 7.5, yeah, it's not so bad. The bench rest, not so bad, so it'd be worth exploring. And the, um, and the uh, Federal Standard Rifle, actually, not bad at all either, but not great, but not bad. The one that's surprising, though, is the Federal Match. Um, it just, it should be better. The the uh, standard deviation extreme spreads all look pretty decent, but it didn't particularly like, I think, this powder combination. So um, it, it's just what it is. These these primers can probably all shoot perfectly well with other powders, maybe varying the loads a little bit. But at least in this test, with a fixed powder load, you can see the primers do change quite a bit. And you can look at these values if you wish, uh, as far as extreme spreads, standard deviations. It changes the results quite a bit. But it uh, really changes the group size, uh, surprisingly. So uh, for sure, CCI 41 is still going to be kind of the standard load. And then uh, we'll, we'll test other things as we move through this series. But I thought you might like to see this because it's really going to start off showing the Wilson Combat Gun, which is a total custom build to a, a DPMS, which is just an upgrade of an existing gun.